Well, welcome to the old classic car channel. It is a particularly fine day out here today, so I thought what better opportunity than to come outside and do a video for the old classic car channel. Now, one of the most common comments and questions I get in uh, feedback with videos that I've done at many of the shows that we get to is, how do you find out about car shows, classic car shows, runs, that kind of thing, taking place in your area? How do we get to hear? about all the events that end up being videoed for the old classic car channel so i thought i would just do a short video with a few tips and a bit of advice on how to find out about shows that are coming up it's still fairly early in the year at the time of recording this particular video and the first big event of the year the classic car season is coming up just in a few days time down at the nec so i thought this is a really good opportunity to just have a little bit of a chat about how we get to here and find out about many of the events that feature here on the old classic car channel. Okay, well let's crack on and have a little bit of a talk about finding classic car shows. I have the clipboard of confusion with me just to make sure that I don't forget anything that I want to cover. But before firing up your PC and spending many hours having a look to see what events are coming up in your area, the thing really to think about first is what type of event or events are of most interest to you. What kind of shows do you like going to? Because there are so many different types of events that take place now. And on this list here, I have just a quick summary of some of them. Now, to begin with, perhaps the type of event that has grown more than any other in recent times is your cars and caffeine type morning meetings, usually on a Saturday or a Sunday morning. Then these can be held in many, many different locations, often at cafes or in pub car parks, any car parks, in fact. And these are really, really growing in popularity, probably because they are fairly informal type gatherings. There's no, usually no pre-booking required. You can kind of turn up when you want to and leave when you want to. And that increasingly seems to be the way that people like to go out and about with their old cars and enjoy just socialising for a few hours without taking up the whole day. So car and caffeine type meetings, as they're called, are super popular. And we try and get to as many of those as we can throughout the season. As you've, if you watch the channel on a fairly regular basis, you'll see we get to events, morning meetings at, for example, Crew Heritage, which is like a heritage railway centre. They have a meeting, usually once a month when the weather's okay. So that's one we definitely try and get to. The Hopley House Farm Shop is another classic car gathering that we try and fit in whenever we can. Then there's the old Piggery Cafe and there are now other ones that take place that we just can't get to. We can't get to all the events. Even in the off season there are quite a lot of events going on and we'll talk about how to find out about these events a little later in this video. So that's the breakfast meetings we've covered and of course you have the traditional the all-day events where you turn up with a car maybe eight or nine o'clock in the morning stay there until four-ish and then head back home again. It's a very very sociable type of event very agreeable and you can spend a relaxing day surrounded by old cars whether you're displaying or simply just turning up as a member of the public and we'll talk a little bit about the differences between displaying and just turning up a little bit later also in this video. So we've done the cars and caffeine morning meets, we've done the regular classic car shows, and then of course you have the road runs. If you've seen videos such as the ones we've done for the Weaver Wanda, for example, which is held here in Cheshire, which is where we're based, that is a very, very popular event. The cars gather in a pre-agreed location, route maps are given out, and the owners of the cars spend a very pleasant few hours driving around, usually around country lanes, roads, quieter backways, the byways of England, and then end up somewhere else, maybe it's another cafe or a pub for a pub lunch, that kind of thing. And again, that is a very, very popular way to spend a few hours in the company of old cars such as these that we've got here. So that is a particular type of event that you might want to look out, even if you're not taking part, if you don't own an old car yourself. It can be well worthwhile finding out where the event starts, where the road run begins, where it ends, and just have a look at the cars that are taking part, especially when the weather's nice. There's usually a really good turnout for this particular type of event, so I can heartily recommend looking out some of those in your area. Next up, motorsport. Now, I agree that motorsport isn't for everyone. Not everyone likes racing cars, but there are so many different flavours of racing and competitive events around the country that usually there is something to please most interests and tastes. There are circuit races, there are hill climbs. If you've been following the channel for a while, you'll know that we go to some of the Vintage Sports Car Club, or VSCC, hill climb meetings at Prescott and Lowton Park. 
and they are very very agreeable places to go to it's all very informal quite laid back but there is an air of competition involved and that can be really really great fun you get fascinating cars turning up in the public car park and you see wonderful old competition prepared cars out on the hill climb circuit so that is definitely something we enjoy doing circuit races as i mentioned before there are local tracks all over the country, Alton Park and so on, with uh, websites associated to them. So again, that's quite a good way of finding places to go to, even, though, even if you're not interested in motor racing itself. Many of the circuits and the hill climb venues, etc., hold events for road cars. So don't just dis dismiss them out of hand because you're not interested in racing. That's definitely an avenue well worth pursuing. Um, and of course, are you just interested in car events or are you interested in events that have a variety of vehicles attending perhaps you're only interested in classic cars or vintage cars or maybe modern classics are you also interested there's a very big tractor just coming past that's handy maybe you're interested in old tractors or commercial vehicles lorries trucks vans pickups that kind of thing or do you want to visit an event which has a mixture of both perhaps you can go to a specific car only event or if you go to some of the steam rallies, you'll find cars, lorries, tractors, commercial vehicles, old agricultural kits, combine harvesters, tractors, all that kind of thing. And often the tractors are being demonstrated, ploughing competitions in the fields next door to the main showgrounds. So there are so many different types of events that you can think about going to. And this, if you just have a bit of a think about this first, it'll really help you come up with a list of car events in your area that you want to try and get to. What else have I got on my list here? Um, public or displaying? Again, I've touched on this before. Are you planning on taking an old car, a bit like this V8 Pilot or our standard 8? Are you taking a car as an exhibitor? In which case you'll have maybe a slightly different take on things. Or are you just going to go as a paying member of the public? We tend to do probably a little bit of both, to be honest. But that's something to consider. And also think about the prices. Some of these events, like the morning meetings, are often free to get into other larger events with much greater overheads they have to charge exhibitors and people turning up just to have a wander around uh, like so that's something to also think about uh, you also want to think about how far away these particular events are is it just too far to go do you run a very thirsty car in which case that might influence where you want to go and what list of shows you want to jot down onto your short list some events if you're taking part you have to pre-book others you can just turn up on the day and again that is something that you might want to think about when drawing up a short list of shows and you've also I've got crossovers written down here because quite often venues that aren't necessarily related to motoring also have days and events that relate to classic cars and vintage cars that kind of thing I'm thinking like Heritage Railways perhaps these kind of places they often if you go to their websites you'll often see throughout the season events where owners of old cars are invited along and again that can just make for a really varied and interesting place to spend the day with your old car or indeed looking at other people's old cars dad's involved with the avro heritage museum over at woodford where there was the the old avro factory and as they've got their heritage museum of course that's mainly about aircraft of course but they have open days open to classic car people and owners of classic cars and just people who are enthusiastic about cars from the days gone by so again there's quite a lot of crossover in this kind of thing i'm sure if you research boat museums or hovercraft museums uh, other aircraft museums that kind of thing heritage tramway museums and organizations i'm sure they all organize events suitable for owners and fans of classic cars so again there's a huge spectrum of events so maybe just try and whittle these down into a short list before heading off to see what events you can find details of online and elsewhere as we will discuss in a moment of course there are still the old school ways of doing things and that specifically I'm thinking about magazines. Obviously, there are many, many classic car magazines around, whether specific to particular cars or just classic cars in general. And they can be an excellent way of finding out about classic car shows in your area. Uh, the only thing I would caution is, while there are no hard and fast rules, what I would say is some of the really glossy monthly classic mag car magazines, they tend to feature just the larger events that take place in this country 
because I'm obviously I'm in the UK, um, or indeed overseas in America, rest of Europe, Australia, that kind of thing. So if you're just looking for somewhere to pop down to on a Saturday or a Sunday, you may find that a lot of the events that feature in the big glossy monthly magazines aren't really that suitable and I very rarely even buy those magazines to be honest. Occasionally I do, but when I do, I find that a lot of the events that are listed, fantastic as they are, don't get me wrong, it really is just the big headline shows that tend to feature in their listings of events that are coming up in the next month or two. So. If you're going to go down the printed route, I would suggest having a look maybe at one or two of the weekly classic car papers. Now, I've got no skin in the game, I have no link to any of these papers, but I do know from personal experience that if you're looking at shows for the coming weekend or the next fortnight or so, they tend to list the shows that are happening across the UK, and large shows, small shows, and a bit of everything. Auto jumbles as well, because we mustn't forget that auto jumbles are hugely popular still, even with the advent of the internet and eBay and buying parts online. There is still a huge following for actually going for a mooch around and trying to discover parts for yourself on an auto jumble stall, perhaps parts that the uh, seller hasn't been able to identify, but you can, and often there are bargains to be found. So yeah, don't write off the old school ways, the magazines and the weekly car newspapers for finding out about events that are coming up because that can really you know that can work really really well and even though so much is online I would still recommend go and grab one of the weekly papers and have a route through and just see what events are coming up I mean I'm recording this in March at the moment so there aren't too many events on but there are quite a lot of the breakfast meetings but in terms of larger shows there aren't too many on at the moment but within just a few weeks certainly in the next month or so they will start popping up and the pages in these weekly papers will be rammed to be honest with events that are coming up so I would certainly recommend once you've decided on the kind of events you want to go to and whether you're going as a spectator or a participant maybe pick up one or two of the weekly papers and just have a look in there because that can be an excellent way of finding out about shows that are coming up in your area right well now it is the time to fire up your computer and go fire up your browser of choice because we are turning to the internet now for a few more ideas about shows coming up in your area and first on my list I have Facebook now Facebook isn't for everyone some people will be oh no we can't use Facebook and I understand that yes it's not for everyone to be honest I don't use it all that often myself but for finding out about car shows coming up it can be an excellent resource so even if you sign up and never post anything on your page keep it as anonymous as you like don't post anything about yourself that is fine but it really is a worthwhile way of finding out about a great deal of events because because it's free to post events up there and post general information lots and lots of people are using Facebook for that particular purpose at one time it was all about forums that kind of thing I mean I've got the forum on the old classic car channel and events do get posted onto forums from time to time and uh, we have a thread running for classic car events in Cheshire for example because obviously that's local to me over there and yeah that can be a good way of finding out but Facebook don't dismiss it out of hand because it really is excellent most of the classic car clubs have pages on there and post regularly about meets that are coming up and possibly that's the only place they actually mention and give a heads up as to what meets they're actually organising. Some of the smaller groups, they're very, very informal meetings, like I say, pub car parks, morning meets, that kind of thing, but they often get posted up onto Facebook. Now, they may just be posted to the page or the group organised and run by the club or the organisation actually setting up the particular meeting and promoting it, or they may actually post and set up things called events, which yes, you may have guessed it, they are events that are coming up. And there'll be details, opening times, that kind of thing, whether there's any fees to pay to come and spectate or bring your own car in fact. But Facebook events and Facebook pages and groups are an excellent way of finding out about shows that are coming up. And that is one of the main ways I find, about, out, find out about the events that we go to. Um, once you've registered and you give an indication of whereabouts in the country or indeed what country you're based in, you can organise events by closest to you, for example, and events will be ordered based on your location and the location of these events. So that is one way 
that we find out about many of the local smaller gatherings that take place in and around this particular area. So I really, even like I say, even if you're not really keen on the idea of Facebook and you've read the Daily Mail and oh Facebook, ooh, you know, yes it's not ideal, yes it's not perfect but you can choose what information you do or don't share on there. But even if you just register and never post anywhere, it can be an excellent way of finding out about shows and as this video is all about how to find classic car shows in my area I can't do it without at least mentioning Facebook. Now next on the list on the clipboard of confusion we have YouTube, YouTube search and if you're watching this particular video then you'll know all about YouTube and how there's such a huge variety of videos on here and again this is an excellent way of finding out about events that are in your area. Just search for car show then your county or your town or your city, nearby locations and you might be surprised at what actually comes up because you have to remember at the end of the day YouTube is I think probably the second largest search website. Google is the biggest search engine of all and we'll touch on search engines in a moment. But uh, YouTube, which is actually owned by Google, is the second largest search engine out on the internet. So again, you're looking at this video on here, you found this video somehow, whether it's come up in your notifications, you're already a subscriber, perhaps you're not even subscribed to the old Classic Car channel, in which case, please think about giving it a sub because that really helps the channel grow. But yes, search YouTube, uh, YouTube search can be another excellent way of finding out about events that are coming up in your area and indeed further afield. So I would definitely recommend spending a little bit of time on there doing various different searches, whether it's lorry shows, car shows, also have a look at the pages and videos relating to museums because they can often post up events. I'm thinking in particular of like the British Motor Museum down at Gaydon for example just off the M40 which is a really easy place to get to. If you go and have a look on their YouTube pages, if you search YouTube for videos done at Gaydon, the classic commercial vehicle show, I did a video there in 2023 and that was really, really popular. Tens of thousands of people viewed that one and they all found that video probably either by following this channel or searching for events that they're interested in via the YouTube search. So again, you're on here now. When you finish watching this video, please subscribe if you haven't already, and then maybe just do a few searches and just see what events are covered and featured in other people's videos, because amazingly there are other video channels on here about classic cars. I know, amazing, isn't it? Um, and just see what crops up, because sometimes the most obscure meetings that you've probably never even heard of, even if it's just a few miles down the road, can pop up when you do a search for YouTube. So again, try Facebook, then try YouTube, and then try word of mouth another old school way of doing it like i say magazines the weeklies are a really good way of finding out about events throughout the country that are coming up in the next couple of weeks but also word of mouth if you see someone at a show get talking to them and find out what are the shows they are planning to attend if you see someone in a petrol station with a morris minor or an austin a35 i've yet to meet someone who is out and about in their old car and isn't willing to talk to someone about their passion, their hobby and their lovely old car. So if you see someone pulled up at the petrol station or at the side of the road or parked in a car park somewhere, have a quick word with them, have a chat, find out what shows they go to because word of mouth again can be a really excellent way of finding out what events are on and coming up in this particular area. It's really worth it. Just, there's just so many different ways to find out about shows that are coming up. And again, Let's have a look back to the computer, back to the, the dreaded screen, I'm afraid. And we have Twitter, or X, as I believe it's called at the moment, but it does seem to vary depending on which week you are actually online. But like with Facebook, you can do quite a few searches on there. It's not as good as Facebook, to be honest, for finding things, but it's definitely worth a few minutes of your time just to see what show organisers also have pages on Twitter, or x.com, or whatever it is now. And just have a look on there why not why wouldn't you go and at least check on there you don't have to register to view posts on twitter um, same with facebook actually so why not give that a go because again it's just sometimes a good way people a lot of show organizers aren't always very good at promoting the events that they actually run they may be a bit old school maybe not too keen 
on using the internet that kind of thing and they may just post in one place you might expect them to post on their website facebook twitter instagram that's another one instagram uh, quite a lot of events get shared on their details of them um, but often quite often people maybe just post on one place or someone a friend of a friend posts something and they may only ever post in one location online whereas you might expect them to post all over the place quite often that doesn't happen um, so again look in different places that would be my particular recommendation because it's surprising what will turn up on one particular platform say facebook or x but not anywhere else and it's, it's surprising just how often that happens and quite a few shows i've found in one location only and not anywhere else not a whisper anywhere else so it's definitely worth pursuing all these different avenues online and indeed in the print media and that way you get to draw quite a list of events that are coming up when I start at the beginning of the year what I do is I go through and look at the events that we visited last year and then research the dates for them this year as and when they get published so that's my starting point and then once I've done that then I go and go through this list to find out events that maybe I've missed or perhaps even new events that are coming up for this year for the very first time so as I've touched on already of course search engines now search engine at one time when I first started out on computing there were quite a few search engines to choose from uh, Alta Vista, Yahoo, that kind of thing, but really Google is the main one, it's the daddy of all the search engines. You've got Bing as well, Bing.com, which is run by Microsoft, so that's another search engine you could try, but for now let's just talk about Google. And again, anyone who posts to a website, Facebook, X, all these kind of places, sooner or later that content, that post, will get indexed by the Google search engine. Uh, posts on forums as well, posts on the old classic car forum, they get indexed by Google. Um, which means that after just a day or three, you do a search on Google and the pages that relate to your search, even if it's only posted in the last couple of days or so, should start to appear in the search engine results that come up on the screen. So if you're looking for events that may be in your area or a little further afield, do a few searches on there for car show plus your location, your town, your city, classic car meet, breakfast meet, plus again your location. And just try and experiment with a few different ways, perhaps different ways of referring to the areas of the country that you are interested in. You know, you may have Shropshire, for example, or you may have the old version of Shropshire, which is Salop. Some people you still use Salop as the name for that particular county. So, again, you have to sort of mix up your searches a little bit and just think a little bit outside the box and think, how will, how could people describe the type of events that you want to go to? Like I say, you've got steam rallies, classic car show, vintage car show, classic car meet, vintage car meet, car meeting, car meetings modern classics cheshire modern classics buckinghamshire modern classics london old school car meet all these different terms think of different ways you could phrase the one particular term rather than just searching for one particular version but yes the google search engine even though i'm not overly keen on google i think it has too much of a monopoly on everything um, it really is probably if you're going to only spend a limited amount of time online doing searches for websites and pages relating to uh, events that are coming up that's probably one of the best places you can spend some time on that and Facebook those are probably the two best ways online of finding out about meets like those that we get to throughout the year here at OCCHQ and just to really wrap up this particular video while you are online as well as searching for specific classic car shows in your area also take a look do a search for museums in your area or the area that you are particularly interested in because you'd be surprised how many museums hold open days and classic and vintage car meetings there are so many i'm thinking of even like the langothan rail museum uh, where they've got the steam railway operating down in langothan there in wales there are quite often throughout the year classic car meetings classic car gatherings that you are as well as being able to take your car or go and look at old cars you get the chance to ride on the steam railway as well so definitely check out some of the museums that are around large museums smaller museums again search for museums in the areas that you are interested in and you'd be surprised have a look at their events pages and I'm sure there's a very good chance that some of the more organized museums will be holding open days and special event days 
tailored towards the interests of classic car people like me and indeed all of you watching this particular video here on the old classic car channel so yeah keep your options open have a look around think laterally a little bit again you may even find that uh, marinas for where well, boats are stored that kind of thing you may find that they hold informal little meetings throughout the year and sometimes some of the smaller meetings are actually way more enjoyable than the big really organized events that's certainly what we're finding and like I said at the very beginning of this video the car and caffeine the morning breakfast meets they seem to be the events that are really really taking off now and if you don't do anything else this year try and get along to a few of those even if it's only for a couple of hours anyway I hope that video was of use I think we've covered pretty much everything on here just to give you a few tips and a few ideas on how to find out about classic car shows in your area and when this comes up again in the comments on future videos which I'm sure it will I will direct people to this particular video so thank you so much for watching that's really appreciated I hope this video was of some use let me know in the comments if I've missed out anything if you can think of ways of finding out about car events that I haven't covered in this particular video then please pop a note in the comments it's always interesting to read what you think give it a like maybe subscribe if you haven't already because it's I'd really like to get the subscriber numbers up on the channel this particular year and yes well anyway thank you very much for watching the sun has come out so I think we will be taking the V8 pilot out for a little run round just down the road and get to enjoy classic cars which at the end of the day is the whole point of the old classic car channel so thanks for watching and bye for now.